Hi, I'm Mitchell Chapman. Uh, I'm a senior. I'm graduating this year with a BSS in uh, technical theater and theater design. Uh, I was the Paxton Fellow in theater design this past summer, like Jason said, at the Puppet Kitchen in New York City. Uh, so, a little bit about the Puppet Kitchen. It is a small workshop in the East Village of Manhattan. It was started in 2008 by three friends who did, who did puppetry for a living. Uh, the company is a for hire uh, company that builds puppets uh, for clients all over the country. Some of their uh, more notable clients are the San Diego Zoo. The puppet, the puppet Kitchen built a myriad of zoo animals, uh, zoo animal puppets for them uh, for their 100th anniversary celebration. Uh, they've also been contracted to do uh, puppets with uh, television studios like Nickelodeon. They've even done work here at Cornell. Um, that's what the picture in the bottom right is from, is from a show they did here. Um, so why puppetry is a really good question. Uh, puppets are a very, puppetry is a very uh, versatile medium, so it makes sense that a zoo calls up the puppet kitchen all the way across the country to build them a life-size African elephant puppet. Uh, it's something that really only puppetry can accomplish. Um, that being said, the people who contract the, the, the Puppet Kitchen uh, have a lot of input in the designs, even though they might not be the most uh, skilled in puppetry, they have a lot of input to make sure that the final product is something that they, that they want. Uh, so the people who own the Puppet Kitchen call themselves the Puppet Kitchen Chefs. Uh, their names are, the top left is Eric Wright. Uh, he studied marionettes and puppetry performance. He uh, sort of see, oversees over day-to-day -day operations at one of their sites. Uh, Michael Schubach in the top right, he has worked with the Jim Henson Company, they do all the Muppets, um, and Sesame Street. Uh, and then Emily DeCola on the bottom, she is the uh, sort of president of the, of the company. Uh, they, all three of them came to Cornell two years ago to teach courses and direct a show that I was able to stage manage, and they used that connection that I, that I made with them to, uh, to apply for their apprentice program through the Cornell Fellowship. So the Puppet Kitchen takes four studio apprentices every season, uh, and what a studio apprentice does is basically shop maintenance. So we, we maintain uh, shop materials and keep them in stock and organized. We clean the shop at the, at the end of the day and we make sure that every single worker is fed. Uh, the Puppet Kitchen does this nice thing where they, they, give, they, they buy lunch for their workers every day, which is really awesome. Uh, another thing that you get to do is work with these, uh, these builders who they, they, they hired to come in and build these puppets for them. And I learned so much. I learned so much from from all these from all these different people. Um, we also, as a studio apprentice, you get to you get to design and create your own personal project that the Puppet Kitchen chefs sort of help you on during your session. Um, so before I talk about my personal project, the, the probably the most exciting time at the Puppet Kitchen was the beginning. We worked on this really big project called the Very Hungry Caterpillar Show, which is a stage adaptation of a popular children's book. You might know it. Um, <laughs> There were 75 puppets in the show, which is a lot, because some puppets were like the size of an actual like black bear. Like some of these, some of these puppets were life size. It was really cool. Um, so in order to make all those puppets, you have to be really efficient in splitting up the work. So there were a bunch of crew members at the puppet kitchen who did carpentry. There were a bunch of people who did fabrics. There were a bunch of people who did paint. And I sort of hopped back and back and forth between the different <laughs> crews. Um, the chefs worked really closely with Eric Carl and his company to make sure that the puppets resembled his illustrations. So the top two pictures are puppets and the bottom two pictures are illustrations. So I think they did a really good job. <laughs> um, and I'd like to point out that the woman sitting next to Michael is actually a Cornell alum. She uh, works for the Puppet Kitchen and it was, really, it was really weird seeing her because I didn't know that she was a Cornell alum and I walked in the Puppet Kitchen and she gave me a big hug and she was like, you, you go to Cornell, that's so cool. Um, so it was really interesting. Uh, so my personal project, I decided to tackle this sort of uh, stereotype in puppetry where unless the, unless the puppet has overtly feminine characteristics, so unless the puppet has long hair or eyelashes or makeup, um, you, people tend to use masculine pronouns with the puppet. Um, and I didn't like that. So I decided to uh, combat that. Um, and Michael Schupach, my, one, of my, one of my site supervisors, um, Told me, he gave me a bunch of different options for how to accomplish this. Um, and the top right image is my final product, uh, is what I, what I ended up getting at the end of my session. Um, I chose to use big bushy eyebrows, which is sort of a masculine characteristic, and the pink fur, which you can associate with femininity, um, to create this gender neutral uh, character. The result is that people still sort of gendered my puppet, which is fine. Um, I didn't create a character or anything for it, it was just the physical puppet. So that's the, that's the next step, would be creating a character to inhabit the puppet that goes along with the gender neutral theme. 
Um, it was really inspiring to work with the chefs every week. We got to, like uh, every, every, one day every single week, we got to work with the chefs and they helped us, they helped us with, our, with our personal projects. Um, and I just, the wor working with Michael helped me strive to represent people who maybe don't stick to gender binary uh, in puppetry. So what I got from this experience, um, I, was, I was able to work in a workshop in New York City, which is ex extraordinary. Um, I furthered my theater career. I made a lot of professional connections in New York, which is fantastic. Um, and I learned how to design and fabricate puppets. And I added to my physical portfolio, which I have an example of. Um, <laughs> I you ma made this puppet using techniques that I learned at the puppet kitchen. Um, <laughs> his name is Baxter. Say hi, Baxter. Hi, Baxter. <laughs> He's got hands. Uh, Really great. Um, so <laughs> the, uh, the uh, other things that I was able to gain because of this fellowship, uh, I lived in the biggest city in America for an entire summer, which was stressful, but it was, it was overall very rewarding. Um, I made a lot of meaningful friendships. I gained a lot of self-confidence. And I also have this drive to pursue puppetry in my uh, professional career. Uh, where did the clicker go? <laughs> uh, so with gratitude, I'd like to thank the Cornell Fellows Program, because this wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't have been able to do this without them. Uh, my, site my site supervisors, Michael Schupach and Eric Wright, and my faculty sponsor, Scott Olinger.